and uh, I just want to want to kick I just want to kick this off uh, with a couple of fast comments. Uh, first of all, this is the last uh, webinar of the year. Uh, we are uh, going to take a break, obviously, in December, um, and so this is sort of our send off for 2022. What an amazing year it has been. And we're gonna talk about that, talk about that in terms of where we are with Feed the Planet, what we've done, we're gonna get into that. But just looking forward to 2023, we have some amazing um, webinar speakers lined up already. You don't wanna miss January, keep, just, just keep watching your, your emails because we're gonna have a really a very special guest, somebody who is an absolute worldwide respected expert in the world of seafood. And he's going to talk a lot about seafood and specifically about aquaculture. So stay tuned on that because I frankly um, can't wait to, to hear what he has to say because it's going to be extremely uh, educational. And then we're going to jump into some other stuff in February, March. But anyways, be, be ready for that. There's going to be lots of great stuff. So today we sort of thought that wouldn't it be neat to round out the year and bring uh, the, the one and only, the world famous... Ragnar. Thank you, Chris. Uh, on just to sort of talk about, you know, a lot has happened with Feed the Planet over the years. But before we get into that, um, so who is this Ragnar guy? And Ragnar, I have your, I have your uh, sort of bio-ish open on my other screen here, you know. So he is currently managing director of World Association of Chef Societies and has been doing that since 2009 that's crazy that seems like yesterday all right but he has he's done a lot of other stuff in his career and i'm going to ask him to, to sort of talk a little more about this but he was founder and ceo of a thing called passion food which is food and wine photography publishing and communication did it, doing a lot in the world of champagne uh, which was exceptional and with uh, michelin starred chefs he was a marketing manager he was a restaurant manager uh in in um, in norway among other things, his education master diploma of the Institut des Hautes Etudes de Gou. He has an MBA, a bachelor in entrepreneurship, hotel management. You've done everything. He speaks a hundred different languages. And my favorite part about this whole thing is, aside from being Icelandic and French nationalities, is it says driver's license. Yes, good. Okay, so for everybody, if Ragnar's ever wanting to drive anywhere, um, I, I can tell you he has- I'm your man. I'm a... He has a driver's license. I love it. Anyways, so so Ragnar, seriously, um, a, a, a huge welcome. Um, he, Ragnar and I have been working together for a long time uh, on, on Feed the Planet. So it really is having you on is is um, like having a good, a good friend, quite frankly. So maybe it's a little silly for those who are watching. But anyways, Ragnar, welcome. And I just want to begin, you know, because we all, you know, we all hear from you, see your emails, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But just tell me a little bit about, you know, I guess if you could just expound a little bit on your background, just for those who maybe don't know you, um, as well as some of us do. So talk a little bit about what brought you to World Chefs. I think, thank you, Chris, and, and uh, thank you for that introduction, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say hello to everyone. Wonderful to see you. And uh, yeah, right, Chris. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really simple. I, I, uh, uh, I started very early in hospitality, and, uh, and so I did my, my basic hospitality training, uh, you know, that old style catering school where we learned everything. And, uh, and I went from there to uh, more to front office and uh, and sommelier and uh, and uh, always uh, following my passion which is this industry hospitality industry uh, such su such an amazing people you meet in this industry and uh, and uh, it sort of uh, I never got tired of it and I, and I wanted still to grow and pursue my career and this is where passion food comes into play is uh, I wanted to uh, to still have a a role in industry but uh, with uh, from a lot of different angles and perspective I've done everything from uh, Bartending in nightclubs and uh, cocktailing and and sommelier and uh, and uh, royal banqueting and uh, and what have you and and so uh, it was a continuous uh, learning uh, that brought me to places by chance and uh, it was uh, an encounter with uh, with then President Gisel Goodmanson, uh, a countryman of mine, who made the de bold decision that Welsh should have its office 
and staff. And so I became uh, the uh, the first employee of World Chefs. And, uh, and uh, really when I didn't know wax at the time or World Chefs now uh, at, at, at so much, but uh, but uh, really, uh, when I started to get into it, uh, meeting the people, all the passion behind it, really, I, I really uh, dived into it, and and I, I felt, I felt, I really felt, and I said that to uh, to uh, to people that I've been training for this role all my life is really what I felt, and that is uh, what it meant to me, and uh, the how fortunate I am to uh, to be able to take up this role and grow it with all the team now with Lynn here and uh, the, uh, all the team at the office growing this uh actually what what i feel i'm doing what i feel we are doing together as a team and with you as, as well all the committee members the board members president is uh, we're enabling our chefs around the world really to act to act for good whether it's through uh, education or sustainability or social or humanitarian or just bringing young people and train and educate young people into our industry we are we are in the fortunate position to be able to enable the rest of the guys to do that power of the white jacket so yeah. power of the white jacket so let me ask so so let me ask you you know what you know a lot of the other guests that i've had on here i i like to ask sort of that question about their personal sustainability journey like what brought them to the point where they are today and i and i guess i would ask you the same you know where where does your passion for sustainability come from and and why do you think, and we'll get into the whole history thing in a minute, but, but, and why do you think it's so essential that we as world chefs sort of have this platform of, of sustainability? No, it, it's, uh, and <laughs> so it, it, it really, uh, um, we, we started because we're talking about decades of sustainability. And uh, when we started back in 2012, it was something that was talked about uh, and I would say myself included was maybe not taking it extremely seriously, uh, but it was a vision at the time that that you know that maybe we should be uh, bringing uh, this at attention to to the issues of sustainability because of you know our planet. Uh, then we were saying, well, oh, we if we don't change, we're gonna we're gonna be in and that problem and this problem and it was all these you know these these uh, 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 preaching of, of fear you could say and mm -hmm. uh, and and so uh, we thought well hey world chef should be a part of this, this discussion and uh, and it wasn't taken that seriously at the time i think something snapped something went wrong in the planet and now we're uh, we're in, in the panic seat now i guess in the sense that we need to do something and fast and i and i, I think we all had, had gone through this learning curve you know I, I think I think that's a really good way to to sort of look at this because you know and and I appreciate you saying that because I think for all of us we've all gone through that learning curve and especially those of us you know of a certain age <laughs> I mean younger folks have grown up with sustainability we didn't and for us it was really truly a learning curve of going from the world's fine and will always be fine to wait a minute people are kind of suggesting that maybe we're not so fine to like you said we're kind of in the panic seat now like okay we really need to get thinking about what where are we going to go with this and i think that for me personally the fact that world chefs has stepped in and said no we're we're going to make this an important part of what we do uh, is exemplary. I, I really do. And I think I think history will look back on this and say, you know what, that was the right decision for that time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So Ragnar, let's jump back into the history of Feed the Planet. You know, we talk about 2012. And maybe if you can just sort of give us a little sense for, for where it started, how it started, and kind of a little bit of how we got to today. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, Chris. It's, it's uh, and, and uh, back to 2012, a decade of of uh, of, of growth. Uh, at the time, um, there was uh, uh, when we start talking about sustainability, we had policymakers and and you know presidents uh, of states talking about sustainability. But uh, we realized it had mostly to do with food. A lot of it, a lot of the issue and the problems uh, are around food, and so. Um, 
So uh, at the time, with Gisser Goodmanson at the time, well, we thought, well, world chefs, chefs should be a part of the discussion. Chefs should be a part of the solution. Chefs should be the change agents. And, uh, and, and we wanted to present that to our members, but for us to be able to have a message, we first needed to teach ourselves, teach our members, teach ourselves to understand the, uh, the, the issues of what, what is, uh, we, we are facing with. And so in 2012, uh, we made a bold declaration that was signed at the Congress in Daejeong, together with the uh, with uh, the mayor of Daejeong, who was close to uh, UN, UN Secretary of the, at the time, uh, who, who gave us a special uh, message uh, at the Congress to urge chefs to act and to be the change agent. And there were about a thousand chefs that signed this declaration that is still hanging up in our office today. Uh, that uh, that world chefs, that chefs all around the world, they should use the power of the white jacket to make a positive change in the world. That's how it started. An idea, no better than any other politician came up with it, an idea. But we had another thinking behind it. We need to act. And you know that it wasn't so easy. And you know it was a long way to uh, to get started. Where do we start? Uh, how do we get from? from words to concrete actions. I mean, God knows the, the, uh, the issues are there. You know, you talk about, at the time, food waste to a chef. And, uh, you know, what a food waste to a chef at the time was, no, we don't waste food in our kitchen. <laughs> so you had to make a whole complete change of, of, of uh, mentality that, uh, you know, that we understand, yes, there is an issue. And, and you know, there was a lot of uh, good people that had to, you know, that came to the table. We were working with some, some really great people and companies like Rick Moonian at the time, who was with us, uh, ensuring that we, we were, uh, uh, you know, asking the right questions. And, uh, and well, we thought, like, first thing we need to do is educate ourselves. I think that's when you came in, Chris, sustainability education. And that wasn't an easy task at all. It was a couple of years in, like, where do we start? Where do we even start that thing? And sometimes we're like, when we were getting overboard, we had to really break it all down and say like, no, we, like, we need to have it like something that people can understand and it has to be light and easy. And where do we find that balance? And, and so, um, so that's really where it started. Chefs educating other chefs, but we had to educate ourselves first. You know, but then back to you, Chris, how did you, you, this is what you came in. Now we're 2015, that's three years later. <laughs> Years later, I, I maybe even before that. I don't exactly. Yeah, maybe it was actually in Leipzig, in Leipzig, yeah. Germany, at that meeting. Germany, yeah. That's yeah. where that's where I I came in. But you know, I I think this is, and we're going to talk in a little bit about sort of where we are today because it started with this idea. And I think, Ragnar, to your point, when we when we first started, it was, um, you know, the, when you talked about sustainability, it wasn't universally understood or appreciated and i think that that the fact that world chefs already in 2012 that's 10 a decade ago actually said we're going to sort of commit to this uh that was visionary absolutely visionary and if i think about and i'm going to ask you about a couple of your maybe memories along the way but if i think about you know sustainability in world chefs one of the one of my sort of pivotal memories is what happened in stavanger when Julian Cribb came on stage, Julian Cribb, a very famous author from Australia, who wrote some transformational uh, books on, on sustainability, extremely well-researched. And uh, one of them uh, called The Coming Famine uh, is, 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 is legendary. But anyways, when he was on stage, I'll never forget, he challenged us. He challenged us chefs. He said, you know, you have to take the reins of responsibility and make this world a better world and it was that was for me i think the moment that that things really started to move but ragnar just i'd like to ask you because you know we've had a lot of different things that we've done and but are there any memories that just sort of stick out stories that stick out in your head of the last decade and what feed the planet has done no, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Chris, that uh, so many people have uh, have stepped up and there's been a discussion of, you know, if I started naming some, I have to name them all. And, and uh, of course, like the first one to, to ask is would be Electrolux uh, and Electrolux Professional, Electrolux Food, Food Foundation, uh, Custom Culinary uh, with Nestle Professional, with uh, 
with all, all the people you, you mentioned there as well uh, that have been there, City and Gills have, have been there with us, uh, Johnson and Wales, the, the Colonial Institute of America, so many, so many uh, people have come to the to the table and, and discussion and, and uh, you know, um, for, 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 as for, for memories, uh, you know, I, I think uh, coming together, when we came together for our first meeting and it was in Stockholm and, and you were there and we had all like started the, uh, the, the the training of this and it was it was actually getting that first team together uh starting with uh almost an empty paper uh which uh, you know we had to sort of start putting our dreams on on and uh and then setting kpis to those and an action plans but th that th those first meetings were actually some of the sweetest memories huh? and uh you know it's of course very personal memories it's it's with us with you with uh with the electrolux team uh, now with Cosimo here and, and you know Ingrid Malin, all all, all that uh, you know people coming together where we really sort of uh, could could dream together, and I think that's such a that's just such a good memory today because when I see well, what we have achieved since then, <laughs> I think like you know even going back after those meetings, that meeting, that first meeting, we're like like yeah, you know if we get half of that, well, that'll be great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I, I, I I share your your memories of that because we get together once or so a year somewhere in the world to really map out what we're doing and and you know we take this extremely seriously just for everybody listening that you know we actually make very concrete KPIs and we really hold ourselves to it and really act on it very much like you know a, a you know business plan would be and. Uh, Yes, in those first meetings that we had, uh, it was it was a little bit dreamy, like maybe, and and we're going to talk in a minute. I'm going to ask you, Ragnar, about where we are today because those those dreams were were far surpassed, and now we've we've raised the bar for ourselves. But and 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 it's not just ourselves. I mean, it's for everybody who's listening and every member of World Chefs. But I do want to call out, uh, and Ragnar, you you sort of alluded to it. We have partners. We have partners in this Feed the Planet world. Uh, the Electrolux folks, the Food Foundation over there, uh, Isaac International, Custom Culinary. These are uh, partners that without them, um, this never could have been achieved. And I, I, I mean, we can do so much as chefs and we have a lot of power of that white jacket. But I will say, just to call out to these other organizations, that it is those people in those organizations that worked truly, I mean, hand in hand with us and continue to do so today and without them and their different skill sets, none of this would be possible. So I just wanna, I just wanna call that out. But Ragnar, so we've talked about 2012, you talked about some memories of getting together. I'm, you know, we talked about Stavanger, we talked about getting together in Stockholm and, and dreaming and bringing these diverse skill sets of people together. So where are we today? Yeah. Give, me a, give me a little I, little update annual report. How's that? A little update. And, and I think like maybe just to go through, like, you know, what we, I mentioned earlier, where do we start? We started with sustainability education and maybe give an update of all the programs that we put in place then because yes, sustainable education was teach ourselves, teach the, chef, the, the chefs, which is uh, was the first step. Then be a positive impact to others. We have uh, been working on food heroes to talk to a children uh, also through uh, you know uh, different activities going into uh, primary schools talking to children of uh, more sustainable more healthy nutritious finish your meal all sort of campaigns that we are trying to be a positive impact to others uh, also to society uh, how can we also uh, improve societies through uh, our program that we uh, we named like a chef which basically is a uh, education for employment what we see in our industry is there is a both a, a huge need for uh, for skilled workforce. Uh, people are not entering into the industry as much as we would, would like, as much as needed, because it's a very high growing industry. At the same time, we see around the world, uh, high levels of poverty, people that that have the cap capabilities, maybe have, have the uh, the passion to work in our industry, but not do not have the means uh, to enter, do not have the educational uh, uh, access to education or, or to mentorship that allows them to enter into our industry. So we created Like a Chef. Uh, th those are, I think, some of the key projects, key programs that we've been working on. And uh, and uh, where are we today? It's just amazing. I think with all our messaging, all that we've been doing, we've reached uh, almost now 1 million 
people through our social media campaigns, etc. Uh, concrete terms, what have, what have we achieved uh, on sustainability education? Sustainability education is now taught in, in numerous schools uh, around the world in five languages. There are, there are hundreds of trainers out there. And we are graduating, well, soon we'll be graduating a 10,000 uh, 10, student uh, in, in, this, uh, in this program. And, uh, and we have ambition for a lot more because the thing is, it's a train, a tr train the trainer type of program. We want uh, people to train others and then they train others. And so we want a snowball effect. Uh, on the Food Heroes, uh, amazing partnership with ISAC, student organization. Uh, the Food Hero Challenge has reached uh, almost 100,000 kids around the world, you know, and so many professionals, uh, chefs have been have been active in all in 50, 60 countries, been active to, to uh, promote, to talk about healthy, nutritious food to the next generation, which is so important to us. Uh, like a chef, which is, uh, you know, uh, 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 like a chef, the education for employment, uh, which is a quite a, yeah, it's, it's, it's not an easy project. It's a very ambitious project. And uh, the, the results have been uh, far beyond uh, uh, what we expected. We, have, uh, we, are, we are now working in seven training locations and where we have a template ready to open more so people can help us open other training locations because we have the uh, training program. You worked on the training program, Chris. And so we have a training program in place. We can take people that are, are in poverty, in, in any distress, refugees, immigrants, uh, uh, asylum seekers. How can we integrate them into society using our profession as the vehicle? We have uh, these centers in, in seven locations today. Uh, thousand people have been graduated. That means thousands of people. We change their lives. We touch their hearts. And so uh, so that, that means something. And again, we've set a sort of, a, with all that I've said now, it's it's almost just like the tip of the iceberg. It's 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 actually we set the base, because when we this, when we created those programs, and you would know best of all, is that we want them to be replicable and impactful. So uh, impact and repeat and repeat and up duplicate. And so uh, so now I think from now on, decade later, I think we are ready to really grow this exponentially. I love it. Um, you know, every time I hear these numbers, uh, my, I, 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 I just can't help but smile because, you know, again, thinking back to where this started, thinking back to the vision in 2012, we never could have imagined the success. We never could have imagined that we could have touched 100,000 students or that we could have graduated now 10,000 people with our sustainability curriculum. And that is on you know, it's, it's, it's digitized now. So, yep. you know, and, and we have all these train the trainers around the world. And by the way, we're going to talk to one in just a minute, but, but this is, 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 is exciting now. I mean, really exciting. This is a great way to finish the year, <laughs> but, but Ragnar, I'm going to come back to you at the very end and just ask for your sort of look into the future. But before that, I have some questions. Um, that I'm seeing in the in the Q and A here. So, um, and maybe I can even answer some of these. But will uh, will we be hearing uh, from Feed the Planet in 2023 about various transformative food systems like vertical farming, cultured meats, aquaculture? Um, yes. All right, no, next. No taboo. No taboo. <laughs> Everything is on the table. We are not here to to, uh, to do any like dogmatic. Uh, Evangelism. We're here to talk about issues, race issues. So, yep. isn't it, Chris? It is all about education and empowerment. That's our that's our motto. But aquaculture is going to be in January, and cultured meats. I'm actually working on that right now. Uh, that's a that's a growing uh, thing that sounds so so strange, but at the same time, huge progress on that. So, Mark, we're gonna we're gonna get to that. Um, then the next question is uh, also from Mark, but Feed the Planet program, Like a Chef, is a great program. Can you share the program's vision for the future? How can more companies in the hospitality, culinary, and food service world help grow this program? Ragnar, do you want to jump on that? Or I can also address that, but... Yeah, uh, what, what is so great about the partnership we have, uh, uh, Chris, is that... Uh, with, with Electrolux, Electrolux Food Foundation, are extremely selfless people. And it's, it's always been a very open, open dynamic partnership. 
I mean, they invest a, a lot of resources in, in this partnership. Uh, I'm not talking money. I'm talking about all, all the, 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 the people within the organization, the time, the efforts, the passion they put into this. And it's always been about how do we like, how can we keep bring other partners in, uh, work together to make more impact? It's always been about how more impact, not about me, me, me. It's, like, it's, about, it's about you, you, you and others. So, uh, so uh, definitely, as, as, a, as, a, as a long answer to your question there, it's uh, yes, it, it's really, we have these templates, we have this, this partnership open for if uh, companies, other institutions, food service companies want to get involved, uh, we have some tools that we can put, put out there and together we can actually uh, multiply the, uh, the impact. Yes, and, I, and I'll also just add to that, um, that you know, with, with all of these programs that we've, we've talked about, we've talked about, you know, the, the, the sustainability education. We've talked about how people can get involved as a trainer. Uh, we've talked about, which we're going to talk to Stephen in just a second on. And we've, you know, we've talked about, you know, the Leica Chef and, and we've talked about uh, food heroes. But, you know, when it comes to something like, you know, the Leica Chef program, that's a, that's really a big commitment. I mean, this is, this is, uh, you know, a couple months of, you know, or at least six weeks, seven weeks of education that's provided. It is an amazing program. And I, I, we're going to actually talk next year about with the person who is, who's currently sort of heading up this part of the, um, of Feed the Planet. And here's some stories because the stories are just, are, are heartwarming. And, and this is the really neat thing is that every one of you that's listening and every member of World Chefs can be involved. And I think also can be very proud of what our organization has done. We are not an organization that just sits around. I mean, we are challenging ourselves and you to get involved and do more. So I do want to ask uh, Stephen Bolton, who's who's on right now and uh, joining us from Indonesia, from the so you are head. I'm looking at your uh, head of international research and lecture at Otimo. Uh, Master Gourmet Academy in Indonesia. And so you are one of the trainers, certified trainers out there who is teaching the sustainability curriculum. And I know you just wanted to jump in and, and sort of make a comment here this morning. So I guess morning, day, whatever it is, evening, your time. So please go ahead, welcome. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Um, first, I apologize. I have a very unstable connection. Um, because I'm currently in Bali, not in my office as normal. Um, so I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, what Otimo are doing to put sustainability actually through all the organization in Otimo. So in January, actually, um, we will actually be teaching all the staff, which includes all the lecturers, which are the chef lecturers, and also the theoretical lectures we have. So basically, as we go through the next semester, they can actually bring sustainability into the kitchens and also into the classrooms as well. I, I think it's, it's really a, a great program. And I think depending where you are, you will find the students have an interest maybe in agriculture. And then what we've actually found is that they're really interested in first the water, then the energy, and then the nutrition, um, because they're actually going to be chefs. So they, they really focus on once they've got the produce, what can they do with that? And how do they make um, healthy food as much as they can? And then they concentrate on the menus uh, to bring in plant-based food. So I think from myself and Julia, who is also a trainer, um, this is what we found when we recently completed sustainability in Ottimo. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for taking the time to join us. And, uh, and it's great to see you, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, the, um, this, is, this is, I think, a great example of how, you know, someone can take this, 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 these resources Everything is free, by the way, you know, take the resources and employ it and grow it because we have a big audacious goal to have 100,000 people 
trained in sustainability education by 2030. 100,000 people. That's 90,000 more to go. And we only get to 90,000 if more of us get involved and jump in. And like Stephen, like, you know, he became a trainer, then now he's make, he's making other trainers and, and they hopefully will make other trainers. And all of a sudden through the, the work of one person, we can grow that to literally impacting thousands of people. And every one of you who's listening, you have that ability as well. So we're just about out of time. In fact, we're a little bit over. So, so Ragnar, I, I told you, I was gonna ask you just briefly, as you look into your crystal ball for feed the planet, what do we see in the future? What do you see? I, I see that we, uh, we, as I said, we have a certain base now, and I see us now starting to, uh, firstly, to multiply the uh, impact uh, using the template that we have. Is exactly what you said with, with Stephen. Is that that have other train others and have a snowball effect as one thing. I see us also uh, going deeper into the uh, into the subjects. You mentioned that earlier. We're going to have a subject uh, uh, matter a specialist on the uh, the seafood. I see us going deeper into other areas, whether it, you know, we talk about vegan or uh, or animal proteins, uh, alternative animal proteins, or or are we talking about ergonomy in the kitchens, or are we talking about we go deeper into uh, for those who want to really dig in, so we become experts, not just on on the surface bringing awareness, but really be, become experts. So, uh, so we will be, and, and as Welsh, will be a, a not, not a, for us to be a leader, but we can lead the way, lead the way for others to follow uh, of how really we use the power of the white jacket to become the change agent that, you know, we, we will be looked up to when we talk to policymakers, uh, politicians, uh, the, the uh, in, industrial groups, that our our word will matter and our input will 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 be will be heard. So, awesome. Thank you, and Ragnar, thank you for your leadership. I mean, you are, and just so everybody knows on this on this webinar, that you know Ragnar really is one hundred percent committed to this, as is the board, and that is why we continue to do what we do. But I do want to just call out two other people. Lynn, can you turn your camera on just for a second? <laughs> She's like. <laughs> I just wasn't on the script. <laughs> there you go. I just want to call out, I want to call out Lynn. And I know I always get, you know, I always thank you, but you know, as we wrap up this year, um, Lynn does so much work in the whole feed the planet thing. I mean, truly, um, she puts in countless hours. And I, I just want to call you out and say a huge thank you to you. Because without your, you and your efforts uh, also, I mean, this, this stuff doesn't move forward. So thank you. And the other person just to call out, who I'm not sure if she's on, is, is Shona, uh, who is the vice chair in Toronto. Uh, she is an amazing, amazing partner in this. And I just want to call her out and tell her a huge thank you. And with that, I guess we'll see you in the new year. Happy holidays to everyone. Have a wonderful New Year's. And we look forward to 2023 and beyond to continue to roll up our sleeves, to continue to work hard to make a difference. And I think the really sort of key message of today is we are making a difference and we have a lot more to go with the help of our partners and with the help of everybody within the World Chefs community. We ask you to consider doing more and getting involved. And with that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody. See you in 2023. It's just around the corner. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, and thank you.